Boom, 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 boom. OK, now, starting with you, what would you start right here? No, no, what would you say is the first, the first point? Recap the deaths. Okay. Recap deaths. Good job. Okay. What would you say in the second line? Uh, in this case, it would be... Uh, What's the uh, second? Thinking along the lines of rebuttal. Yes. What, no, what is the what is the what is a statement that you want to use to prove me wrong? Do you want to directly refute my statement? Do you want to say no, people don't die, or do you want to say even if people die, we still like dogs? Which one do you want to say? Uh, it would probably end up being the even if people die. Okay, even if. They're still good because they really don't talk to themselves. Okay. Okay, hold on. That's good. Now, how would you? What would you say? The because why is that? Even if why is even if true? Why is it better than people choking on dog hair? Dogs are worth it. Okay, why are dogs worth it? That's a claim. Dogs are worth it. Give me one solid reason why dogs are worth it. Why are they man's best friend? I'm trying to get you guys to think critically here. Because they're loyal. Okay, I'll, I'm pretty shaky, but I'll, I'll take it for now. Save people's lives. Okay, save. Help the blind. Lives help blind. That's, I'll take that. Now, what's the therefore? Therefore, we should keep dogs. Because you wanted to prove that even if dogs make people choke by dog hair, they're better. So, uh, keep dogs. Okay, now, here's an interesting lesson. This is something that can apply to all of debate. Dogs. This is completely not true and totally false. Just made it up off the top of my head. So we're going to take a little break from the four-point refutation for like 35 seconds. Number one, debate asks you to think critically, which means don't always trust every single thing that I say up here just because I'm the instructor. Think critically. Ask me to verify things critically. Ask me to prove what I'm saying. Because you shouldn't accept it just because I say it. You should want me to prove it. Just like when I ask you to say something, you know, if I made a claim, you want me to prove it. Just like when you guys made a claim, dogs are loyal, dogs are man's best friend, I want you to prove it. Makes you think critically. Makes you stretch your mind. Stretch your mind. There we go. So that's the, just, just a quick break from what we were doing in four-point refutation. But let's talk about the benefits of four-point refutation when you're in the debate round. Like I said, when you're in the middle of the debate round and you can't think of anything to say, write down the four lines. Because you don't know what you're going to say, but you know you're going to have four things to say. And that's one of the best feelings in the world. Because you're like, gosh, I don't know what I'm going to say yet, but I know when I do get up and say it, it's going to be so good. Because I've got four responses to his one argument. That's one of the, one of the best feelings in the world, honestly. So. Here's quickly, make sure you write this down, four quick advantages to four-point refutation. So I just made a statement. Four-point refutation is the best. But I need to back it up and prove to you why four-point refutation is the best. Because another instructor could come along and say, I've got this great new idea. It's called 26-point refutation. It's the best thing in the world. And you'd have no idea which one's better. You'd have to weigh them. You'd have to prove it. Well, here's my four reasons why four-point refutation is the best. Number one is clarity. The judge can very easily understand where you are, where your opponent is, and where your answer lies. The truth is not hard to find with four-point refutation. And that's what you want to do. You want to lead the judge to truth, or truth is how you, the debater, see it. <laughs> A lot of times, that's what happens in the round. Two is it's extremely thorough. You, ba you basically address every point that the team brought up, the other team brought up. It's very thorough. When you do four-point refutation, you cover exactly what you said. And I'm taking into good faith the fact that you will not straw man this argument. If you do straw man this argument, that's ethically, I guess you could say, reprehensible. We say. This is the claim. Oh, oh, uh, extremely thorough. Basically, it's as thorough as responses come. You say exactly what they said. You say exactly what you say. You tell the judge why you said it and what the impact of saying it is. It's extremely thorough. Number two. Oh, also, cool new rule. If you yawn in my class, you have to hit the table 10 times, OK? 
That's just a rule I made up because it's a lot of fun. So if I yawn or if one of you guys yawns, you've got to hit the table 10 times just because I want to have fun. So, and if you see somebody else yawn, you have to make them hit the table. All right. So the third point is my favorite. It makes you look cool. Cred debate is all about credibility. Who here can tell me what credibility is? What the judge or the audience thinks of you as a... Right. How they believe you. What kind of uh, ethos is what the name of the company is. What kind of ethos you bring into the round. What kind of, uh, I guess, like feeling and kind of believability. How believable you are. And making a response, four points, and addressing every single point that your opponent brought up gives you a lot of credibility. The judge is like, man, this guy really knows what he's talking about. And so throughout, and you might like, I, I guess I've gotten up here. The other guys yesterday were just talking about debate, and I'm getting up here and talking about the judge, you know, a lot about the judge, the judge, the, the judge, the judge, the judge. Basically, the whole point of debate is to convince the judge, essentially, to make the judge believe what you're saying. So in real life, we'll talk about the real life application of four-point refutation at the end of this lecture. But basically, right now, we're just talking about winning debate, because that's what you guys are here to do, right? You're here to learn how to debate. You're here, lear here to learn how to win. Okay, number four. It uses up time when you're scrambling for arguments. Now, for new debaters, this is a problem. For other debaters, like Spencer and I, if we had a dime for every time our paper was full of stuff and we didn't get through all, yeah, Tucker nodding his head too. It's true. Like you just start writing and you're like, oh, this is so cool. And then they say something else. You're like, oh, I got 26 responses to that. Hold on, I got to flow it out. And then you're like, you get up there and you're like, dang it. Like I'm only going to fit half of this in the speech. Like, shoot. Like you got to like. <laughs> Well, but then the judge doesn't understand you as well. So and some judges some judges like speed. Most judges don't, at least in the Stowe and NCFCA leagues. So for you guys, four point refutation is just beautiful because it helps you know what you're gonna say before you're gonna say it. Because they could have let's see they let's say they have four strong arguments, like in the parley round, um, later today or tomorrow. Your opponent's going to get up and say, Judge, I have four reasons why this is true. And you're like, oh, I got this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you're like, oh, this is just, they're going down, boy. Like, look at, look at all the responses that you have to their arguments. And it helps you gather information, gather your thoughts, and allows you to put them out in a winsome way, even before sometimes you know what you're going to say. Um... OK, so then let's talk about real life application and how to insert four-point refutation into a round. Does anybody have any questions first? Do you have anything to add, Spencer? I just say, um, the four-point refutation, if you were to label them as separate points, it might confuse you, especially That's the true. one. Yeah. <laughs> just to be like, wait, your response is their argument? So, <laughs> That's um, true. The four-point refutation is more like a, a framework for responding to a point. Yeah. So when, when the opponent has a point, your response is really point two, and everything builds up around it. Yeah. Impact. Like, yep. It's the same basic stuff. And that's yeah. how every argument is built. You say something, you support it, and then you tell everyone why it matters. Yeah. And while he's on that subject, there's two ways that you can, while you're in the round, that you can use four point refutation. And as you get to be a better debater, you'll learn that one way is extremely superior, but there's one way is an easy way, one way is a little bit of a harder way. And these are just rhetorically, how you use four point refutation in the round. The first one is you just go like that. You say, you know what, Judge, they said that whales die. You know what we say? We say whales don't die because we read a study, and here's a piece of evidence saying that whales don't die. And therefore, the impact of that is whales don't die, and their argument is wrong. That's how you can use it. Second, second rhetorically, and it's a little bit harder because it causes you to think of what you're going to say, is you can say, Judge, you know, the, the opponents brought up an interesting point talking about how they believe that the population of whales is decreasing. We don't actually believe that's true. We believe that the population of whales is actually increasing. And we believe that for three reasons. The first of the, these three reasons is a piece of evidence that we're going to read about how whales don't die. The second piece of evidence is that, you know what, the other day I saw a whale at the beach. You know, it was, it actually was, was living and doing fine. And the third reason is because I love whales. I don't want to believe that they're going into, you know, they're, they're going into extinction. That's why we believe whales are not dying. And the impact of that argument is essentially that whales are on the rise and that the negative team is, or the affirmative team is causing you to believe something that is actually counter to the fact. Now, what did I just do? I used four-point refutation without actually saying, they say, we say, therefore, because, uh, uh, because therefore. So this is rhetorically superior, makes you sound better, more credible. And this is actually true in all of rhetoric. 
But this is the framework that you want to use. So don't feel bad doing this, because all debaters have done it. When they first learned what four-point refutation was, they get up there, their hands are shaking, and they're like, uh, this is the argument. This is what we say. And we say this because this. Therefore, ah, uh, ah, uh, OK, yes, I found it. You know, like they, they get up there, and they use this. So don't be afraid to use this. This is what everybody starts out with. But as soon as possible, transfer to that version right there, because it's a little bit more rhetorically superior if the judges like it. Yeah. 